So after the events of the first Regulation G tournament, we owe Maridon an apology. So Maridon was considered prior to this first tournament of Regulation G, the Indianapolis Regionals, it was considered a B tier restricted Pokemon. And I even mentioned in my recent Maridon problem video that I think there's still potential for this to be good in the format. I think as it sits right now, there's some issues with uh, team building specifically around this Pokemon. I think everybody is a little too focused on uh, Hydron Engine for this Pokemon. Everybody is like, oh, we need to use Pokemon that fit this particular ability well. I think, again, as time goes on and we see more stuff like this pop up, uh, where's Incineroar? You see more stuff like this pop up. Um, I think this is going to be just much better in general and maybe throw like Iron Bundle or something on there. Um, this is just going to be a much better option for me right on. And this definitely seems to be the case. Rajon Ball won the Indianapolis Regionals with a Maridon team that featured no future Paradox Pokemon. This is exactly what I said in that video that as soon as somebody realized that you don't need the future Paradox Pokemon to thrive with Maridon, then it was going to start popping off because the damage that this thing does is ridiculous. So we're going to go through and talk about the Pokemon that we saw at the Indianapolis Regionals in the top cut. And then we're also going to talk about this winning team specifically. And I want to start with the winning team and talk about why Maridon is so cool. Maridon on this team was rocking choice specs with Volt Switch, Discharge, Electro Drift, and Draco Meteor. This is just all out damage. Do as much as you can. If the situation doesn't look great, you can Volt Switch out and do a ton of damage. It was running Terra Electric. And if you look at everything combined here, right, you've got Electric Terrain that increases the 30% damage of Electric type moves. You have the Choice Specs on top of that that is going to buff your special attack. Then on top of that, you have Hydron Engine that is going to boost the special attack even farther by an additional 1.33 while Electric Terrain is active. And Terra Electric, these Electric type moves are going absolutely crazy and doing a ridiculous amount of damage and again if we go back and look at this team we have Maridon, Whimsicott, Incineroar, Cornerstone, Ogre Pond, Farigareth, and Blood Moon, Ursaluna. There is not a future Paradox Pokemon in sight on this team and it makes so much sense. So the key component here is Maridon next to Whimsicott. Whimsicott is very very cool in this instance because you have Prankster options right you have Prankster with Tailwind you had Moonblast on this thing. You had Moonblast. You have Encore, which is fantastic because if anything tries to protect or do anything shenanigan related in front of your Maridon, all you have to do is Encore at the following turn and they have to swap, do this, that, or the other. It puts your opponent in a really difficult position. This team is crafted so incredibly well. It is such a cool team. Uh, then you have Protect on this as well because Maridon is running Discharge. You have the ability to protect your Whimsicott and not break your Focus Sash and go for Discharge to hit everything on the field. Absolutely smart call there. On top of this, the Cornerstone Ogre Pawn is such a unique call, but makes so much sense. This was running Ivy Cudgel. Uh, I'm not sure what the other move, whether it was Horn Leech or if it was Woodhammer on this particular Pokemon. I would, I would imagine it was uh, Horn Leech and not Woodhammer um, for this Pokemon. But with the ability for sturdy you have two pokemon that immediately just don't take any well they're going to take more than one hit unless it's from like a surging strikes or something it's going to take more than one hit to ko these two pokemon you have two focus sash users for the price of one right it's really really powerful in that regard you have a follow me user as well to redirect annoying attacks like spore things of that nature if for whatever reason your electric terrain goes down you have a lot of uh, amoongus answers just in these three pokemon right here because of the fact that you have the electric terrain that is stopping spore you have whimsicott that can swap into spore you have ogre pond that can follow me away spore there's so many answers to amoongus that you just shut down down, and the Maridon damage into Amoongus is stupid. Volt Switch was doing ridiculous damage with Electric Terrain up as well as Terra Electric. Just massive damage into that Pokemon. Very, very powerful. On top of this, you had other really cool stuff. Uh, there was a Farigaraf on this team that was running Terra Blast with Foul Play, Helping Hand, and Trick Room. So you have the counter, not Trick, Trick Room. So you have the counter play. Uh, of being able to switch in for Rigoraf with Armor Tail to stop a fake out, this, that, or the other, and be able to uh, allow Maridon to swap out more effectively with Volt Switch. Say, if a Rillaboom were to come in that turn, um, or if Rillaboom was already in and stopped your terrain, you're able to rotate very effectively in that regard. 
uh, very powerful combination there. Terra Blast, obviously being a normal type move, gets Stab for Farigaraf, which is really cool. You don't have to actually Terrasalize this Pokemon to get a lot of benefit out of Terra Blast on this. Foul Play plays very nicely into Shadow Rider as well as into Ice Rider. So you got a lot of really solid components here. And this was actually running Electric Seed. So you're boosting the defense of this Pokemon with the Electric Terrain on the field, giving Farigaraf even more bulk, which is, it's a fairly bulky Pokemon naturally. Uh, so giving it a lot of play uh, with the Mirage ride on on the team then like i mentioned you had blood moon ursaluna which is just really solid you could swap this in if you're going for a discharge and be able to not hit this pokemon which is a really smart uh call for this particular team uh it also plays very nicely into shadow rider calyrex which a lot of people were going to be running at this event which when we get into the rest of the teams that top cut you'll notice was not the call for this particular event um but really solid pokemon nonetheless in regards to uh this particular team and then finally, you had Incineroar. This just gives you good rotation ability. This was an Assault Vest Incineroar set. Uh, running Knockoff, Flare Blitz, U-Turn, and Fake Out. This just was incredibly bulky. Was able to eat hits from things like Terrapagos and a lot of other Pokemon. Very, very solid Pokemon to bring into this particular team. This was just a very bulky, very positional team that just worked so incredibly well. It was incredibly well-crafted. And I have to give props to Rajan for this. This was very cool. And... I just, I, I'm over the moon. And we're going to see a lot of Maridon pick up because of this team. Maridon just doesn't care what you are. It doesn't care if it resists. It is going to hit you incredibly hard. So really, really powerful Pokemon. And it's going to pick up a lot in usage. But let's talk about some of the other teams that were featured here in the top eight. So like I mentioned, there's not a Shadow Rider Calyrex in sight. Uh, there was Terrapagos, which honestly had a great showing at indianapolis uh mainly running the choice specs variant which makes a lot of sense next to the gu this was a very hyper offense oriented team and honestly the finals came down to a roll uh either team could have won that finals it was a very close set and was very fun to watch and Terrapagos showed why it's so good that if you run choice specs on this thing and you go for a Terra Star Storm after Terrasalization, having a spread move with 120 base power with the choice specs that can hit anything for neutral damage is incredibly powerful. It locks people into their uh, Terrasalization. They, they are scared to Terrasalize in front of this thing. It's just incredibly powerful for that reason. But the other Pokemon, Ice Rider, showed up. Ice Rider did incredibly well at the tournament. Uh, very strong Pokemon. Obviously, it deals with a lot of things in the meta very well. Uh, you're seeing mainly this like hybrid um, kind of semi off uh, hyper offense, semi trick room, kind of a balanced variation of trick room with this Pokemon. And it makes a lot of sense because honestly, if you weren't running a zero speed Ice Rider, being able to just click Glacial Lance and because of the ability for Ice Rider to take hits, you don't always have to set the trick room. So if you weren't running that zero speed and you were just trying to do as much damage as you possibly could, it was a very powerful Pokemon. Um, for that reason, very good, and it, you saw it show up twice here in the top four. Terrapagos again with Nick Navar, very similar team to what we saw in second place. Uh, very, very powerful combination of Pokemon. Again, this was a Choice Specs variant on the uh, Terrapagos, just doing massive damage. Then we have Kyogre, and this Kyogre team popped up a fair bit at Indianapolis. This was running with Iron Jugulus, and the reason that this team was so cool was that Iron Jugulus made a lot of sense as far as a Pokemon next to Kyogre, right? Kyogre obviously setting Drizzle. I think this one was running Assault Vest um, with Drizzle, right? So you set the rain, you're bulky, you're able to eat more hits. You have it next to this Iron Jugulus that has access to uh, Tailwind with Booster Energy. So this thing is incredibly fast. It can't be taunted because it's a dark type. Uh, Prankster taunted, that is. And you're able to get your Tailwind up and allow Kyogre to start just going for Water Spouts. But the key component, the reason Iron Jugulus hasn't been incredibly good into many formats up until this point, was that it usually had to rely on Air Slash or something to that effect, or uh, Air Cutter for the ability to have good uh, flying type stab. However, with Kyogre, you're actually able to run Hurricane on this Pokemon, which is incredibly solid. You're able to do so much more damage with Hurricane as your flying type stab and do so much damage. This would also have Snarl on it. And I just, I'd imagine it was running Protect. Uh, the Pokepaste are not actually on the uh, Victory Road page quite yet, but 
Snarl plays very nicely into opposing Terrapagos, as well as into things like uh, Calyrex Shadow Rider, uh, into Raging Bolt. So there's a lot of things that this Pokemon was able to do. Uh, so this was a very cool Kyogre variant that would pop up, and you're seeing it with like Serena as well. Uh, having that priority blockage with Queenly Majesty. Really interesting way to play Kyogre that did incredibly well at the Indianapolis Regionals. I believe Justin Tang was also running this team. Um, just a very cool team all around uh, for Kyogre. So I definitely think that this is a fun variant of Kyogre, but with Maridon being as popular as it was, very difficult team to play into that particular matchup. Then we also have Zamazenta. Zamazenta came in force with Latios of all things. Very cool team looking here uh Z zamazenta just incredibly good being able to set the iron defense able to go for bulk up do those things uh this had pelipper on it for the wide guard coverage as well just a very solid pokemon all around and no shock that it made it into the top eight and another me right on team from aaron trailer coming in with ditto very similar to the team that won uh the regional but this had ditto instead of the cornerstone ogre pond to copy uh restricted on the opposing side of the field which makes a lot of sense gives you a lot of playability into a lot of pokemon that you'd be up against gives you that extra restricted pokemon very cool team nonetheless so a lot of cool stuff popping up in the top uh top eight of this regional and again no shadow rider in sight not a single shadow rider in top eight and i think the reason for that is that as far as these pokemon go if you look at all the restricteds that are in this we have um miraidon that goes fast hits hard uh and can take hits right terapagos hits hard takes hits ice rider hits hard takes hits uh kyogre hits hard takes hits. zamazenta hits hard all these are in bulky restricted pokemon very bulky restricted pokemon versus if you look at shadow rider this thing is very positional very positional uh, most are running like focus sash to preserve themselves uh because they just go down so quickly uh and before this reason they are just so frail it is a very scary pokemon obviously it's a scary pokemon to go up against if you pl misplay but if you're able to take a hit especially in the form of like terapagos which just is immune to astral barrage you're able to deal with the calyrex very effectively um so this pokemon just was not the meta call here because it just couldn't deal enough damage quickly enough to these very bulky pokemon uh in the top cut uh so calyrex shadow rider actually taking a fall from grace uh it was very popular going into the right re regional everybody was saying this was the s tier pokemon but it just doesn't seem to be the case this thing just wasn't able to hold a candle to a lot of these bulkier restricted pokemon which i find very very interesting now with Miraidon picking up in usage as well as Terrapagos being a close contender for the winner of this regional we are going to see some shifts in the meta uh ground types are going to become even more valuable ground types are going to be very very popular uh whether that be in the form of Ting Lu because both of the Pokemon that were in first and second place are special attackers Vessel of Ruin is incredibly powerful into this being able to lower the attack uh special attack stat of those two Pokemon Terrapagos as well as Miraidon very powerful uh opposition uh your ground types you're immune to all the shenanigans that would come out of a miraidon um you're going to still take a draco meteor but it's going to do less damage obviously because of the multiplier here but a uh, very possible pickup in usage here with ting lu i could see this being on ice rider teams you're going to see a lot of ground type pokemon picking up in usage mainly because of the fact that you know miraidon won the whole event so honestly i could see a spike in groudon usage uh groudon could become more popular just for this reason alone maybe run it next to a bronzong um to get the gravity set gravity is going to set you're able to then uh click precipice blades with no regard right you could just click precipice blades after a sword stance and do massive damage so i could definitely see groudon picking up and play uh because of this and it's kind of funny because we talked about recently that groudon has issues because of precipice blades but because of this groudon becomes an even better option uh in the format currently but because of the spike in ground type usage we're probably going to see a little bit more lando whether it be lando i or lando t i think both of these have some play in the format because of what is popular we could see these two pokemon come up but because of all these ground types that are going to be popping up ice rider gets better ice rider gets even better in the format you're able to eat up these ground type pokemon i think that ice rider uh with the team that is currently still seeing play um these particular like pelipper um urshifu rapid strike teams i think these still see a lot of play going into the next tournament simply because of the fact that you are able to uh dish out a ton of damage to the teams that are going to be trying to counter the maridon and terapagos cores um i think that's going to be very very popular going into the next tournament is a lot of these ground type pokemon that are going to be picking up because maridon is going to be everywhere honestly i think the pokemon that has the most 
probability of winning the next tournament simply based on the results of this because of all the hard counters that are going to be going into uh me right on specifically i think the two candidates that are the most likely to win the next tournament are going to be terapagos or ice rider i think these two pokemon are going to be positioned very well to deal with the threats of the Maridon team as well as the counter for the Maridon team there's going to be some development in these two teams and again Tropagos was very close to winning that set altogether very close to being the regulation g champion of the first regional um so Tarapagos, I think, is just going to continue to develop and continue to be a very powerful threat in the format, regardless of the fact that it did lose this one. It's just going to continue to get getting better and better as the format develops. And then Ice Rider, like I said, is going to pick up simply because of the fact that people are going to be countering those Maridon teams with a lot of ground types and Calyrex just loves to eat up those ground types and again Terrapagos is going to be really good in that regard because you're able to just go for the Terra Stellar Star Storm. Um, and do so much damage so i think that these two pokemon are positioned very very well to deal with a lot of the threats that are going to be coming out of this format uh moving into the next regional what is the next regional i believe it is going to be la yes it does look like los angeles is going to be before naic so we're going to see a little bit more meta development before we get to naic in new orleans later in june so we do have may 24th and 26th for los angeles regional that is coming up that is going to be a very interesting regional is going to really determine what people are building and prepping for going into naic so a lot of really cool stuff coming out of this meta a lot of cool things that are going to pop up here at uh la regional before naic so i'm keen to see what everybody thinks let me know your thoughts in the comments below but we owe me right on an apology if you're not already sub for more videos like this in the future also be sure to check out the discord if you want to share reg g teams that could be featured on the channel in the future but until next time peace